What do you do with all of these grain bags? We have piles and piles and piles of these grain bags. I'll show you what we do with these grain bags. Check it out. Stock, I am sure you have piles and piles and piles of these feed bags at home, just like we do. We have tons of them. And I am forever and always looking for shopping bags. I lose them. I send stuff home with my friends and family in them. So I always need um, shopping totes. So today I'm going to show you how I take these grain bags and turn them into these awesome recyclable uh, shopping totes and they've got little handles on the top and they're nice and big and they are super super sturdy I just love these um, we've been I've been making these for a few years since probably four years five years I don't know we started raising livestock we just started collecting all these bags I didn't want to throw them away because the bags are really sturdy so all you're going to need, this is a super simple project, all you need is a livestock bag, whatever kind you have. I like the 50 pound bags, you can make a nice big grocery bag, you can fit a lot in it, and they're great to take to the beach, to the farmer's market, to the grocery store, to the library, anywhere you're going, they really, they work great for everything. And I always look for, if you look at the plastic, you can see this is a woven plastic. This is going to be a stronger bag and it's not going to tear as easy. I have some that we've used so much they have little wear marks in them, but they don't tear. And uh, I have some that are four years old, five years old, that still are in great condition. Maybe a little wear mark here or there, but they're still super strong and super durable. So all you need for this project is a woven plastic um, feed bag, a few pins maybe to hold your handles in place. It makes it easier when you're stitching them on and a pair of scissors. And you're going to need a sewing machine. I use just a regular 1960s, 70s Singer sewing machine that was a gift to me like 20 years ago, but it still works so I still use it. It sews these babies like a champ. You may have to adjust your tension but mine just sews these like butter. It's old and it'll go through anything, I think. <clears throat> All right, so let me get this table cleared off and we okay, will get so we've started. we've got our grain bag and I just like to straighten everything out, get it nice and flat, kind of fold it in the way it's already done. On both sides, make sure it's nice and flat. And then I'm gonna decide what I want to see on my bag. So I want this picture to be the front of my bag. So what I'm going to do, and we're going to, this is going to be gusseted, you know, four, three and a half, four inches about. Um, you could measure that if you want and to give you an exact line where it's going to be. But I've done these enough that I know right about where I want this. So I'm going to cut this off right across this line here. And just make a straight cut right across and then push that to the side and then we're going to go up here to the top and we're going to trim this down a little so the bag isn't quite so tall we don't want to drag it on the ground while we're using it and I'm not the tallest person in the world so I like to make them a reasonable size 15 16 inches is plenty you can get boxes of cereal in there all your paper towels, all that kind of stuff. You can really load these bags up too, so that's nice. So I'm gonna go right about across where the middle of this blue seal. And you could use, you know, a rotary blade or you could do this however you like to. I just use scissors, it's quick and easy this way. There, so this piece I'm gonna put off to the side. We don't want to throw any pieces away because we're going to make our handles out of this bag too. So it's completely made from recycled items and there's zero cost in this. This is a bag you would normally throw away. 
So we're going to take our bag and we're going to turn it inside out. This is kind of noisy. Okay, so now you've got your bag inside out. You just want to, your picture is here. That's the front of your bag up here. I'm going to lay that on top so I can kind of work with it. And we want to put our gusseted parts on the edges. So when these fold, the creases are already there and that is going to center our picture on the front of our bag. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this on the sewing machine and we're going to put two seams across the bottom. And we just do two seams across the bottom so it gives it that extra strength. Okay, so we that have we want. put two seams across the bottom. Uh, right here, I just sewed one straight line down and then another straight line down. And we went all the way across the bottom and we did a little back stitch on both of them just to make sure our seams aren't going to fall out if they get pulled or anything like that. So we're just going to cut our excess threads off right here, real quick. Just snip those off. You could pull those and hide them, but it's way at the bottom of the bag, stuffed in the corner, so I'm not real concerned about those. I don't bother with them. And then on the top, I'm going to take my top and I'm going to fold this down. And I'm going to go about, I don't know, between a half inch and three quarters of an inch. You want enough so you have room to sew this. And I'm going to do this all the way around the bag. You want to make it kind of even so the top of your bag is even. But, and the words on the bag really help out so you can see, you know, if you fold it on the bottom of the words, then you've got a nice straight line. It's all set up for you. Handy dandy. And then, so we've got our back all folded, and then we're just going to fold down our front. And then I just like to slide my hands across and kind of get that seam in there. I don't use pins for this. You could use pins and just pin these down. Every so, every so many inches to help hold it in place, but this is pretty rigid material, so it's not really moving around or anything. So um, now we're just going to put one stitch all the way around this entire top of this bag. We're going to go all the way around it. Okay, so we've got our two seams across the bottom, so it's double seamed, and then one seam on the top to just <clears throat> create that uh, nice edging on the top of the bag. So we're just going to trim our strings again. Where did they go? They're hiding on me. Here they are. So you can, I double backstitched here to hold these threads a little bit better. You can pull these and kind of play with it and pull both strings through the back side. So there are no strings on the front side here. Um, but when you backstitch like that, it makes it a little more challenging. So I'm just going to clip my strings. I do it in the in the fold, so when the bag is in use, you can't see the strings anyway. So <clears throat> okay. So now we've got all this. This is all the stitching on the bag right now. So now we're going to flip this right side out. So we can see our bag. This is loud again. So I just tuck this in like that. You can run a seam across here on the inside to give it that corner. I just tuck it in. It works really easy for me makes it simple and then our bag is back in order. You want to get where these, you want to pull it out to where these gusset lines are so it will sit right when you're filling it. So and I just pull out my ends. If you run your fingers along the bottom that's going to give you a little bit of a uh, bottom to it to help it stand up. <clears throat> so then we have our bag. Eh. 
your bag is all done. We just got to make some handles. So let's get to that. So this is where our scraps come into play. We are going to, I like to try and match up the handles the best I can. One side is white, one side is red, the same here. So I'm going to cut this along this seam line down here. And so we can get this red piece out, just so the handles kind of match. So if I cut it right along this red line, I'm going to go a little bit above it. I'm just going to fold it in. You won't see that. Cut my tag in the way. Sorry about that. So this piece, we don't need this piece. You could throw that away if you want. We really are using as much as we can. Or you could make pockets with it, I guess, for the inside of your bag if you'd like to add pockets. That would work. So then I'm just going to cut right across here. I'm going to try not to, I don't need that tag, so. Okay. So I, I'm going to check those. I don't usually put pockets in these. All right, so here on the inside, if you flip your bag over to the inside of these pieces we cut off, you can peel where they glued it together. Or you can cut it, it's up to you. There's usually a little flap there, so you can peel that. It peels right off. Okay, so now we're going to take these and we're going to fold them in thirds, lengthwise. So I'm going to take this. Can you see this here? Yeah. All right. So, and I'm going to just fold this in. And then I'm going to take the top part and I'm going to fold it over. Or you could fold this part in because it's got that disc color on it. And then fold this part over. And then you can see we've got three pieces all folded in. And we are going to take a stitch right down the center of this, just one stitch, and just to hold it all together. And this is going to be our handle. And we're going to do this for both pieces. And then we will cut them to length, how long we want them. All right, so we've made our handles. We've got our strips all sewn together. They're nice and long. They're way longer than we need. One of these strips will actually make a handle. If you don't mind the different colors of the handles, you can just... So one strip, cut it in half, <clears throat> and you've got yourself two handles. But I like to keep it so they kind of match as much as possible. So <clears throat> on this end, I've got some fraying that happened when I pulled the glue off here. So I'm just going to cut this whole white piece right off. And I'm going to cut both of them at the same time. So I know So we have matching handles because we don't really want one longer than the other. Your bag is going to sit funny then. So we just pop those right off and then we want to, I, I like to give myself five or six inches for a drop from the bag. So I have got plenty of space. So if I put my handles about here, <clears throat> I want them to, I don't know if you can see this, there we go. I want to have five or six inches up above the bag that sticks up. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to cut right about there. I don't know. I think that's, I don't know, 15 inches or so. I don't measure anything, and I can't follow a pattern. I'm definitely no seamstress. I just make everything off the top of my head and hope for the best. And if I fail, I try again. I am definitely the most determined woman ever. So I've cut these pieces off which are just about long enough to make more handles, but we don't need those. You could save them if you want, but I have so many grain bags that I don't really need to save this stuff, and I don't have enough room to save it for just in case. So then we're going to come back to our bag, and we're going to figure out where we want our handles to sit. So I like to fold it flat again. And so my gussets are in there, 
and I take the bag and I fold it right in half, side to side. That way I can get my handles pretty even. <clears throat> so I'm going to take one of my handles. So I like that this says extra egg layer. We're going to put that on the front of our bag, or on the front part. Um, and then I'm going to look here at our gussets, and I'm going to go in, oh, maybe an inch. And we're going to attach our handle. So I'm just going to put a pin in this to hold it where I want it. So I want it to go right about there. Put it to the top of where it says feed. They're a little hard to pin. you really got to use some effort there. So then I want this handle to be in the same place. So what I'm going to do is flip my bag over. And I'm going to put it on top of the poultry word. So it's going to be the same amount of distance down. So when you open it, it will look the same. And I'm just going to match my handles up here. Because I've got my bag folded right in half. So it's going to give me a really good placement for the handle. So then I just take that top piece of the bag and pin this on. So now I've got both of my front handles pinned on. Can you see that there? I think you can. And now we're just going to do the exact same thing to the back of the bag. So we can have two handles. We're going to fold it in half. And it's handy because you've already got this handle here. You want the one on the back to be the same place. So this makes it nice and handy. So we can take and put it in the same place. Right over the other handle so it's all lined up again. And we're just going to pin it to this one layer of the bag. This back layer. And we'll flip it over and do the same thing. You just want to make sure that you're seam is on the inside of the handle so when you pick it up it's not on the outside showing the seam is going to be on the inside Maybe put, this, put that down a little bit I'll go right about there All right, so we've got all our handles pinned on, and we're going to just pop this on the sew machine, and we're going to put a Z. We're going to go across, come down diagonally, and put a Z there. And that is going to give you super strength to hold heavy stuff okay, in these so bags. there you have it. Once you get your handles on, you've got a bag. This is the Z that I put in them. As you can see, I am definitely not a perfect seamstress, but I get by, and I can get things done that I need done, and just make it up these things are so handy we have my daughter when she, my youngest daughter when she was little climbed in one of these bags and about 45 pounds she weighed it held her just fine she thought that was the funnest thing ever riding in one of these bags and um, <laughs> and we you can load these up with all canned goods at the grocery store and they just they really take the weight because they are such a sturdy material that woven plastic I really love these I've done a few cat and dog ones I don't have a cat but my mom does and so she gives me the bags and I make them for her I sell these online there's just they're super fun and easy. Um, I hope you're inspired to go use up some of your grain bags and make some awesome totes. And Or if you just want some, it's a shameless plug here, but I do sell these on eBay and the link is in the description box down below. Um, we have them right on our store. I think we have a few, five or six in there right now and um, that are all made up and ready to ship. But they're super easy to make, and <clears throat> it's a nice way to reuse the bags. And we are always using these bags on our homestead. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. We'd love it if you'd subscribe, if you're not already a subscriber. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye! Bye.